dear students and participants so in this lecture we'll discuss what is the next step or what are the next steps required for further progressing of this technology like the organ printing technology to actually realize the potential of this technology that is producing artificial tissues and organs right we have seen develop we have uh, we have been discussing actually the various aspects of this technology starting from what is 3d bioprinting what are the different types of 3d bioprinting techniques exist also what are the strength and limitation of this different technology what are the critical parameters of these different technologies and also how we can use that technology for different applications and also we have discussed like uh, several biomaterials concept like biowings what are the different types of biowings single material multi-material biowings what are the different typical uh, physiochemical characteristics of features of this biowing that and also there what are the limitation and challenges with these biowings then we have discussed uh, we have then started what is required and how to print in tissue and organ and also how suppose we are targeting a particular tissue construct tissue and organ constructs what is required to print that particular tissue and organs we have discussed a few, a few tissues not we have not few tissue and organs we have not covered all these things because we don't have because there is a time limitation also so we have not covered we have not gone into the details of different 3d printing of different other different tissue st organ, organ structures but i have given some hints about printing of at least kidney heart liver vasculature cornea all this just all these different tissue st organ structures so now and then also we have discussed uh, novel techniques like 4D bioprinting and in situ bioprinting. So in this lecture, what we'll do, this lecture is mostly like a, a summary of the whole course, like whatever we have discussed in this, whatever we have discussed till now, we'll try to again summarize all these different points and then we from there we'll extend that that to what is required to take this technology to the next level like the focus of future research what are the focus is different focus what are the focus of future research right focuses of future for future researchers so because many of you are probably now interested to work in this particular discipline in this particular like in organ printing and probably thinking what is the best project or topic that i can work on so here i can give you a list of things that can be that is the need for to develop further and so that if you are interested you can work on a particular a particular topic i have generally i have typically listed this uh, the fo the focuses like this the points into as per their area like bioprinting technology biomaterials cell source and also like vascularization innervation and maturation so we'll start with the bioprinting technology first. So we, in bioprinting technology, we have discussed various types of bioprinting technology like extrusion-based bioprinting, inject-based bioprinting, laser-assisted bioprinting, digital light projection bioprinting. So all these different things we have discussed. And the, now probably you must have a better idea about how different these different bioprinting technologies work. And also the process parameters related to those bioprinting techniques, right? So most important thing for bioprinting technology is it should be compatible with physiologically relevant materials and cells. And that is the focus of future research where people are trying to develop different new mat novel materials and also how we can use different other types of cells for bioprinting. But the most important thing is the bioprinting technology should not induce any type of toxicity or any kind of adverse effect towards this materials and cells like when we suppose we use a particular types of materials in, the, in a particular type of bioprinter there, there should not be any change or alteration of that properties physical properties of that materials even when you make a structures with that material there should not be any 
deleterious effect of this materials or there should not be introduction of some some kind of some kind of deleterious things or like it suppose any kind of infection any kind of contamination that should not be should not be included within this thing within the materials and cells and also it should not cause toxic toxicity to the cells like the cell side the cell viability as i already mentioned cell viability is of prime importance so the so that's why the bioprinting technology should not be causing any cell damage and the cell viability should be, should be very high with this printing so this should be the main that's why the first point it should be compatible with physiologically relevant materials and cells and there should not be any change into that status of this materials and cells right so that you should understand that and there is a huge body of research actually how we can actually uh, further progress or further modify this technology to suit a particular to suit a, to, uh, to suit printing a particular type of cells and particular type of materials and there are also so one can also think of suitable projects into that particular thing how we can actually improve the materials aspect and the cellular bio cell viability in particular in by any, any particular type of bioprinting techniques the next thing is the increased resolution and speed because we here we have we have seen till now we have seen that that the resolution of bioprinting is actually is varied like inkjet printing has a very high resolution and also extrusion based bioprinting has a lower resolution but when we actually discussed on organ printing there we have dis we have mentioned or i have mentioned that that the organ are actually typically they have micro to meso macro structure and also the internal ge internal architecture of these organs are also have nano to micro architecture so to recreate or reproduce that kind of architecture or that hierarchy resolution is the key here and if we can improve the resolution of that bioprinting system it can actually help to uh, help in understanding or it can actually help to solve that problem of creating very fine intricate microstructure that can be done with this increased resolution so resolution can be improved and to increase the resolution also in case of extrusion based bioprinting there also we have discussed that the because the resolution of in, uh, extrusion based bioprinting is directly dependent on the nozzle diameter so nozzle diameter we cannot reduce the nozzle diameter to very low because actually basically the 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 cells in cap while they are encapsulated in a bio wing they should be passing through that nozzle right so that nozzle diameter we cannot keep the nozzle diameter very close to the cellular dimension like 20 30 micron if the cellular dimension is the nozzle diameter suppose if you keep the nozzle diameter 50 micron it can probably the resolution will be better but then it can lead to decrease in cell viability because the cells will be under tremendous shear stress passing through that narrow passing through the narrow gap so that's why the resolution so that's what we have to think how can we improve the resolution for for laser assisted bioprinter that is not the case there actually we can work on better resolution thing the other thing comes the speed as you have now understood that while during printing the cells are in a condition where that is not very good for their for sustaining for longer time so that's so that we need to increase the speed of the bioprinting techniques so that we can come up with or we can print very we can print uh, the structure very fast like this the so that the the fabrication time can be reduced because the fabrication time has some effect on the printed structures because if the fabrication speed is good then the time required is good then the cells the cells will be healthy in the printed structure they then they can be provided nutrient like the media they can be cultured and under the optimum conditions but during printing that thing can be taken care of so the speed of the system has to be 
optimized without compromising the cell viability and cellular and the resolution of the printed structures. So that though we have to increase the resolution, we have to also improve the speed of the structure. Again, these two are contradictory because suppose if we our resolution is very high where we can print suppose very fine structures, then also that can lead to delay in printing printing process. So there, there we have to come up with a better like we have to come up with some technology where the resolution can be better along with the speed. Then the scale up for commercial application and in many uh, during many of the lectures I have stressed on this point how the scaling up is on major limitation for this organ printing. So how we can improve the improve the increase the scale of this by printing up by, by, or the how we can increase scaling up the process can be faster or the we can print a like functional tissue organ that is of sizable sizable functional tissue and organs like liver liver is like that kind of big structure can be fabricated that can be typically done by as a Marlian also mentioned by mini tissues or modular concept where you can actually print different tissue structures different models and you can make the connect them together and then you can actually come up with this thing because for commercial applications when actually suppose this technology when actually will go to clinic for treating patients that time Scaling up, scale up is the will be the major bottleneck. If suppose you cannot print a big, very big structure, then scale up will be the major issue. So that has to be taken care of. Next point is the combining bioprinting technology to overcome technical challenges. Here also we have discussed this also earlier that a hybrid bioprinting approach, like where because we know very well, suppose this laser assisted bioprinting can the resolution can be very high but extrusion based bioprinting actually can be used to develop a centimeter size of tissue constructs. Now suppose an injured with injured bioprinting we can print very we can pattern very well right we can because it's basically spraying creating droplets and the droplets can pattern where cells can also be loaded and the droplets can pattern on the ground. So now how can we come so can we combine different bioprinting technologies to overcome the technical challenges so how that can be done that is another major major issue and there are such some research groups i can say that working on that these aspects where actually they are combining both suppose they are combining melt extrusion based 3d printing along with inkjet or maybe laser assisted bar printing or maybe some people are working on suppose electro spinning plus extrusion based bar printing so combining different Bioprinting technologies along with some other technology also can lead, can help us to overcome the technical challenges because with a single printing technology it is very difficult to print micro to macro and also nano to micro. So this kind of different scales, different architectures printing is very challenging and a single bioprinting technology can be is very difficult to with for a single bioprinting technology can to do that. So that's why combining or hybrid bioprinting technology can be very well used to develop to overcome these technical challenges. So for bioprinting technology these are the challenges and these are the also the focus for future research and anybody can work on these things and there are actually few some groups are actually working on these different aspects of this technology and to overcome the challenges of the associated with this bioprinting technology. Now the next point is we are going to discuss is biomaterials. So it is also mostly like the, you can consider the bio wings in our case in organ printing. So in terms of bio biomaterials, there are requirements like complex combinations or gradients to achieve desired functional, mechanical, and supportive properties. Like there are few and there are some cases like where we have seen that because the tissue or organ structure is so complex. They are there because most of the time if you consider the ECM also, this is ECM is a combination of diverse or various or varieties of bioactive factors, bio, yeah, bioactive molecules like there are carbohydrates, there are protein, there are growth factors, different other bioactive factors, all these things are there. So to achieve because of that, sometimes this 
this ECM, ECM, the combination, these are uh, the different ECM molecules. They are present in different ratios, different order, and also in different gradients. To act, so, so that's why they, because by this way, they only support even the cellular. Also, sometimes the cells are present also uh, present in a gradient manner, so that a particular function or even the that function can be a desired function or can be mechanical support structure can be possible. So well by printing also we have we have to come up with technologies or strategies by which how can we suppose how can we pattern biometrics? How can we use different types of biometrics within a structure, within this printed structures? How can we generate gradient? How can we generate different types of architectures with different biometrics? Also, can we use a different complex a combination of biometrics to see whether they can actually mimic the chemical composition of the particular tissues or organ structures? So, th so that we can able to generate different functional mechanical fun different support supportive and mechanical function by doing that. So, this is the actually where we have to use this biomimicry approach. We I have discussed earlier that biomimicry approach can be very well used for doing that, and that has to be done for this thing. Other this thing. This can be also modified or designed to facilitate deposition while also exhibiting desired post printing properties. Like during bioprinting, we can actually modify or design certain process to the so that facilitate facilitate the deposit is deposition of the bioprint biometrics in certain way. Like suppose we want to create a, a hierarchy or a gradient, so that deposition process can actually help us to do that. But so that we can actually come up with a desired functions post printing properties can be very well be tuned so that the suppose and here 4d bioprinting can also come in, come into play right where we in 4d bioprinting as we have discussed earlier where we use we use this process where we can print the structure in, in one particular 3d configuration then but it after post printing upon when the stimulus is activated that time the structure can change itself to another 3d configuration so this post printing property suppose if we can control the post printing property of this property by taking care of this deposition process by taking care of the biometrics taking a biometrics then probably we can come up with better strategy better technique technology to address certain limitations to address so that we can, can we can actually address the issues that is related to the bio, bio, that is related to bioprinting so this is another way to do that and there are various groups research groups again working on this problem on the working on this aspect where they are coming or coming up with they are actually trying to reproduce the ECM structures nano ECM chemical properties they are trying to mimic that and then try to use that for different applications and it has been shown that when actually we can try to rec we can recreate that ECM or we can mimic that ECM chemical physical chemical properties then the cellular response also has been improved and it can, can be enhanced further and that is probably there is another way to deal with this thing other than this thing maybe there are various research groups even you know we in our lab also we use there is digitalized tissue specific ECM scaffold to study ECM composition and, or, and as a printable material so what do we do we use different types of digitalized accessory matrix that means we collect different tissues and then we can throw out we can use a process called desolarization by which we can throw out all the cells the cells, the cells are not required because those are, the, those are the mostly immunogenic things so we can throw out the cells and then we can use that ECM material and that that ECM material is very very cell supportive and also it can direct the stem cell differentiation also can be are the directed but with that with the help of the DCM materials we have actually observed that in our laboratory also so the digitalized so that's why there are various research groups now they have started using digitalized accessory matrix and also we have also developed a technology by which the DCM by DCM material can be used to develop biowing so DCM biowing also can be developed and that can be further used further for uh, bioprinting of different Tissue, stru tissue structures and in a way that can definitely help us to to direct tissue growth or to guide the tissue growth in a particular in a particular way so that's why this in the biometrics these are the points that we have to take we have to deal with and and these are these are the various research problems can be actually can be 
generated and can be addressed to tackle this issue. Like where somebody can work on this, how we can best recreate the ACM structures or nano or micro structure with the different types of biomaterial, how we can generate gradient, how we can generate different types of patterns, how we can modify and design the, by the suppose the bi wing to facilitate the position, also exhibit desired post printing properties, and also how different visualized tissue constructs can be or digitalized tissues can be used to develop bi wings for this thing. Next is the cell source, and cell source, if we have when we discuss cells like the bioprinting, we have always discussed the cell source is the primary concerns for bioprinting because only if you don't get cells, then how can you do the bioprinting process? Right? So there can be different types of cell sources, and we need to identify a proper cells, uh, stems, a, a cell sources so that we can have the cells. And another important thing to remember for bioprinting. We the cell requirement of cell number is very very high. So how can we get that many cell num cell cell numbers? That also that is also another thing to be discussed. And mostly the cell source should be well characterized and reproducible sources of cells required. Because once we have suppose we identify a particular cell source, then that has to be properly characterized, and also we have to develop the process by which we can get reproducible sources of cells. Otherwise, there can be a variation and that can lead to different other challenges. Many times, these are also regulatory challenges because the different regulatory, the regulatory body also, they are also trying to understand how good or how, what are the different ways we can actually can be, the cells, the cells can be collected, isolated, characterized and used for bioprinting applications. So there are the various types of cell source. Earlier also have discussed various types of cells. Some are like primary cells, cell, uh, cell source, stem cells, primary cells, different cell cells. These are like different types of cell sources and how well we can use them. That is all another thing. Stem cells are like now more and more autologous stem cells are being used for different tissue, uh, different bio organ printing applications because autologous stem cells there is a less, very very less chance of immune rejection, and because these are patients' own cells. And then definitely these autologous stem cells can be very well used for treating any particular any type of particular diseases. So that's where cell source we need to identify and we need to characterize the stem cells properly. The other thing is combination of cell phenotypes with specific function that is also another important thing because the mostly what happens when we culture the same uh, this primary cells outside the body in a tissue culture condition that time they generally lose their phenotype and also along with the specific function. So how can we actually preserve the phenotype? What type of techniques would, can be used? Suppose we, if we take help of certain biomaterial that can preserve this phenotype and the function of the tissue during bioprinting, that, that can be can always can be taken care of. And the combinations of these things can, has to be addressed and then only it can work, it can help us to do this thing. Next thing is the in case of tissue or organ, in case particular in case of organ, we have seen that a heterogeneous cell types are present there, like different uh, diverse types of cells are present there and all these different cells, they have their own function, so that that's why we need to reproduce this thing, like suppose in case of liver, the liver cells like the hepatocytes, they are, they are, possible, they are involved in case of for for metabolism challenger sites are present they pre the challenges cells are there they are present they are their function is for bile bile circulation bile production similarly for endothelial cells they are present in the endothelial sinusoids but their role is to how the to the the blood from the blood when the blood is going into the tissue like the, the then modern yeah, yeah, controlling that thing is the function of the endothelial cells so this tip so different cells actually they perform different types of function in it in a particular tissue or organ we need to understand that understand that what are that how what are the different cell types present suppose in a particular tissue and organ and what is the function of this each of these cell types for a for our for that thing so now suppose If we understand that, 
then only we can able to reproduce that and that can help us to generate a particular tissue structure where all the suppose if you produce a particular tissue organ structure where all the different types of cell types present so then only we can able to reproduce or recreate all the different functions that a particular tissue or organ does do again can we control the cell proliferation and differentiation of those of the cells towards that particular applications like suppose when we use that cell source for a particular suppose for bone bone tissue engineering suppose when you are trying to bioprint a bone then can we control the cell proliferation and differentiation within that construct how can i do that can be done with some small molecules or other factors if can we use some small molecules or other factors to actually direct the cellular function like this how the cells will proliferate how they, they will differentiate as i mentioned the same cells can be differentiated towards particular lineage how can you can control the differentiation of that stem cell toward particular tissue lineages can you do that so these things also like if we can do that then that definitely that can help us to achieve the goal that means that means we can develop a particular tissue structure organ structure so suppose our interest is to print a piece of bone so that can be very well done if you can understand these points so that is in case so in cell sources we have to come up with reproduce well characterized and reproduce cell sources combination of cell phenotypes with specific functions are very much important to under for understanding for and also for to generate a particular tissue structure tissue or organ structures greater understanding is required of the heterogeneous cell types present in the tissues and how we can actually reproduce them how we can actually use different types of tissue or cell types and then use them for bioprinting that is another thing to be discussed another point to be remembered and how can we control the direct control the cell proliferation and differentiation by using some means like either it can be small molecules or other factors to come up with cell source that like sustaining and healthy cell source that for bioprinting is very very important and how can i do that so all these points are very important for for understanding this thing for understanding the bioprinting the focus of this bioprinting of this you know, what is the next level how we can take it to next level so thank you for attending this lecture in the next lecture we will discuss the a few more points in the next steps in 3d bioprinting thank you